Welcome to the Sunday Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date's January the 12th, 2019, supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom. And Miss Vegas has a wonderful watch list for us today. Yes, well, good day, everyone. Hope you're enjoying your weekend. So today we're going to talk about CPA, Zine, Bind, BA, CGC, and Marvell. So we're first going to talk about CPA, which is Counterpath. And, um, you know, this company obviously is in the communication business. They provide equipment. You know, they do a lot of enterprise service providers and they do a lot of equipment manufacturing. And, you know, this actual stock um, had some news earlier in the week, and the news was that they were selected by Honeywell to be a provider for their company. So um, don't really know the details, I think, of how much money this was worth. I don't recall the dollar value being disclosed but you can assume it's uh, quite a lot. So nevertheless, if you actually were to look at this chart on CPA, and by the way, super, super low float. Uh, so not only did it have news, but it actually is a low floater. And um, one of the things that's important that we talk about and that I teach about is I always talk about you know news, which Jim loves, as you guys know, he always loves to trade on news. Um, but I also talk about and teach about float and float rotation. Um, so I will do a separate video probably on float rotation another time. But I want to do explain that the volume on this was super powerful. They have the um, they have they were chosen by Honeywell to create unified communications for the mobile devices and the handheld scanners. So this definitely made the stock move. Uh, the last time they had any kind of news like this, uh, obviously, was back in October when they were they had some new integrations with CRM solutions. So definitely keep this on watch um, for a potential continuation on the stock. So Jim, let's talk about CPAH because man, that had a beautiful move. Many people traded that multiple times throughout the day. Very good. Well, let me type that in here. CPAH. We had a wonderful run Friday, that's for sure. We had a lot of, lot of, uh, we had like an easy pullbacks on them, and they pulled right up to the 200. So I'm going to clear this up. It's kind of getting a little dirty because we really watched this one real close Friday. I'm going to clear all the lines on it. This is a TTM chart that I'm using with the 200, the 34, and the 9 EMA. Let's pull up the yearly chart and have a look at it first. You notice we did break all the yearly highs. We had a resistance that we had to break right at 271. This sucker ran all the way off this good news, ran all the way from right about a dollar all the way up to 445. Closed with almost 300% up. So we're still going to be very bullish on it. Pullback support. For a low is going to be right here at 270. That's the previous yearly high. And let's look at the three year just to look at it for a second. We did have a three year high up here at 730. So it had a pretty good run here. Must have had some pretty good news back then. And that resistance level is going to be right here, right around the 667 if it decides to run up more. Then we had kind of like a triple top right up in here. And that's going to be that 498 area. Then we're going to have another support right down here. Let's kind of just draw these up right now on the year on a three year. And we're going to bring it back to a year and look at it one more time. We have that support level right there, and then we have a low support right down here, right around the two dollar area, which it could retrace back. And usually, when they retrace back a little bit, you can expect a fifty cent bounce or the momentum can carry and bring it up to the resistance high that it had on Friday right here around 445. So let's put that 445 in here. Then we're going to bring it up to the daily one minute. We're going to try to find some support levels that I missed. There's one right here. 
it could have we have the squeeze going on with the 200 the 9 and the 34 it could dip down to support level and that low support is going to be right down here at 303 that's going to be your second and your first one's going to be right here at the 354 where you see that peak right there so we have three different supports and we have a strong buy and we have one more right here we need to draw this baby in right there at 245 so that pivot point on this channel is going to be right here at 303 that's what I don't want to see it go no lower than that for the retracement back up or I want to see it break up pre-market and break this 445 to those other resistance levels and let me see if I can pull that up on the 20 nope let's go back to that yearly I mean that ain't yearly there we go that ain't gonna work so we have to bring it back to the three year so I'm gonna kind of do this go to that back to that daily and show you what supports I think it's gonna be the pivot point area the low support has to be right here at 303 has to hold your next support is going to be at 354. The resistance to break is going to be that 383 up to that 445. And if that 445 breaks, we'll pull up the three year one more time. And when we have the next resistance right under five, and then we have a long at 667 with a three year high of 773. But expect a little pullback to the 200 on that three year, and that's right there at that 303 area. If that pulls back to that area right there, it can bounce back up and retrace these to back to the 445. And that's it for CPAH. <coughs> and another one is Zine. Okay, well, Zine here, it looks like it had a nice green candle at the close. Had a bit of a bottom play here on ZYNE. You know, one to look at and had a bit of uh, action there the other day. Um, they did announce, though, this is what I do want to mention on Zine. Um, they did have a patent, if you guys remember, back in November for the treatment of fragile X syndrome with transdermal cannabidiol. So definitely keep a watch on this. I know that... Um, a couple different analysts have a target on this. I know one of them was Needham. They have a target on this for $18. And so they've got a lot of things in their pipeline. So definitely keep a watch on this one for sure. And Jim, um, your thoughts on this one, because this is actually one of them that you are watching and liking. Yeah, this is one that I've always liked, but it's had a hard sell-off here. It was up, up above... Up, let me pull up this chart here. Z Y N E. I'm gonna link that so I can get this next time. Ah. Zine. Oh man, this is one I'm gonna have to clear up too. I've been all over this chart. So we're going to clear this one up, start fresh again. Three-year chart up here at $25.95. We had a hard sell-off back into 2019 to $275. And then she went ahead and ran up back up here to this $15 level with a double top area. So we're going to put that right there on the three-year. Then I have another little spot right here I like, right at $13.57. Then you got this spot right here at $12.00. Bucks lower support right down here right around the 974 and then we've got that 837 so this has been a this is a bottom play that I'm looking at real closely this is on the three-year chart and resistance to break right there at 639 so we're gonna pull this up to a yearly now I'm drawing these trend lines in here you see how that on that yearly chart how they kind of go into their little trends right there or their little where they consolidate like this low 639 that's going to be our target to break for resistance at 639 and we have one right here at 553 let me bring it up just a little bit 556 and that's about where we closed at at 562 and then we have that low support down here right around the 506 area so this is the first day of the breakout I think this might be a sector to watch. We're also going to be watching, we're going to talk about CGC. 
And I do believe, I think this is in the marijuana sector also, the ZYNE. We've got a real resistance level right here at 724. But I really like this on this last run we had up here, all the way down here from 356, all the way up to 1674 in about three months. And I do believe we're starting to turn around on a pocket pivot right here, right around the 556 area. So we're going to pull up the daily and look what happened last day, last on the day. We're going to find a couple more supports if it decides to pull back. We did have a, a double top up here. Somebody did come up here and buy some after hours at 573, which is going to be the resistance to break. Your first support is going to be right down here at the 556. So I'm going to put a little channel right in here, 556, maybe 558. Just a couple of pennies for your first support. Your second one's going to be right down here, right right at 539 and then you got another one right here at 550 so no lower than 539 I hate to see it going lower than that I always play them off the 200 if they break out up and pull back that's something I like to talk about to traders try not to chase nothing if you miss that first initial run wait for it to pull back to the 200 for a re-entry on a daily one minute so we've got the first support right here at 556 to 558 that second one at 5, well, 550 is not much of a spread, so we'll go down here to 539. And there's another one right here that I like, and that's going to be that 545. No lower than the 522 for a strong, strong buy. And the resistance we got to break is going to be that 573. So you see this first channel of support, that was a previous high we had in the day, 556 to 558. Your second channel support is going to be right here at 445, 439, somewhere in that vicinity. And your low support at 522 will be a strong buy. The resistance to break, let's see if we can find it on the 20 day. Yeah, oh yeah. It's 20 day chart. I mean, just on 20 days, this thing's up here at 745. Some I had some kind of catalyst for it to run up here on this day back on uh, the 16th. So that, that had to have some kind of news there for it to run up like it did there. We've got a resistance level also right here at 695, and then another one right here, right right there where we had that previous high. Uh, this is really really a nice looking chart to me. If I was looking at, at a pocket pivot, and then we had just that straight run up, which is uh, showing me that this could be the first day of the breakout. It can pull back, like I said, to that 539 area, and that's about a 50, little over a 50% tracement and break the resistance of 594. And then you've got your other resistances that move on up. Feel free to stop this video at any time and write these numbers down or copy and paste this chart. Use them as your own personal reference. Just don't share them. Again, low support, 539. Resistance to break, 573. Up to these other numbers up here. And they just can go on. This thing can run back up here within probably a week up here to 745 maybe but definitely have a hard resistance right in this area from 658 to 695 and that's it for Zine I like Zine I think it's on a rebound the next one we're going to look at is Bind which is also on a wow. rebound Bind let me tell you no one's going to be in a bind in our room because I spotted Bind I mean I gotta say I've been watching Bind with Jake from Trend Spider and hey, Jake, hope you're listening to the video tonight. And uh, I got to tell you, we did like Bind back in December. We just weren't in love with the monthly candle. But, you know, we the thing is, you always got to keep a watch list. And so we kept watching Bind. And on Tuesday, you know, the day after everyone came back from, you know, holiday season, so January 7th, um, I called the bind trade and the trade I called was the bind $77 calls. And those were going for $1 and 65 cents. So it's a $165 investment. It was a weekly trade. I also called another bind contract for gen 17 and I called the $90 calls as well um, to roll these up further out. And let me tell you something about Bind. 
Um, they're actually doing a partnership with McDonald's. They're doing a little test pilot. And I'm really surprised. They're testing this in 50 restaurants in Ontario. And this is coming from the office headquarters in Chicago. Why they picked Ontario, don't ask. But I guess Canadians must love uh, plant-based foods. And so they are launching the PLT which they're calling it the plant lettuce tomato burger, supposedly. And uh, they're adding this to the menu at, like I said, 50 locations. And they're going to be located in Kitchener, Waterloo, Guelph, and in London. And um, what they want to see is they want to see if, obviously, there's an interest from the consumers and also the plant uh, the PLT product will be 50 cents cheaper at $5.99. And so that's going to be the price. And they want to see if there's obviously going to be good sales on this. And I guess from there, they'll decide if the sales revenue will see where this new burger will rank in comparison to their Big Macs and Quarter Pounders. Um, so we'll definitely have to see how the PLT test is going to come. And as a result, we saw a pop in Beyond Meats. And so super bullish on the stock. It's had its pullback, definitely. But the thing is, this stock is also heavily shorted. So the shorts are getting squeezed. We also see a gap fill. I see a gap fill all the way to 105. So it has a beautiful pocket pivot, beautiful volume surge. Um, everything that you can want in a plant-based product is definitely here this is poised for a continuation next week um jim over to you to talk to us about the chart and also i know you traded this too so happy to hear you talk about that as well yep now this is kind of like the way tesla used to be you got a lot of bears that that are still focused on bind but they're also now realizing that we're we're starting to have a reversal here this thing's been kind of shorted all the way from that high of 170 something i think is what we hit or maybe a little higher but we did have a weekly breakout on this stock all the way down here from 75 dollars 74.50 all the way up to 97 so that's you know that's a pretty nice little bounce for a week and i got in it the other day and i thought i was doing good and the thing sunk on me and it turned red on me and and then I held it. I was down quite a bit on it, and the next day I got back in. I, I was in it, and it bounced right back up, back up, and then I got out with a little bit of profit. If I held on a little longer, I could have got out with a lot bigger profit. And then Friday I got back in it again, and it sunk on me again a little bit again. So we're back down here at that support level, at 95.27. That's that's where that low support is. We did close at 96.07. And there's another little trend line right here. And what I want to do is I want to pull up this yearly chart first. We had a high of, oh, yeah, it, it had a high up here right around 239.71. And then she's had that hard sell-off for about six months. And I was very bullish on this run, both Vegas and I were. And especially when it broke that $100 level. Once it broke that $100 level, we started guessing new highs. And I remember telling Vegas, she... I said something like 120, and I said, I was just joking around. I said, ah, 150. And that sucker ran all the way up to 150 and then kept on moving up. So the momentum was behind it. And then you had all the bears bashing it because it wasn't meat, you know, real meat. And so you're still going to have a few bears on this trade. And it's just one you got to follow with the trend. The next resistance past that 9711 high that we had is going to be probably right up around. Oh, I'm going to say 99.85. Let me see. Yeah, we've got to break 100. And I'm going to magnify this up so I can see this a little better. 176. If we can break that 97.11 resistance. So then we do have a target up here right around this area, right around the 150, the 105.52 area to the 106 area. So we'll just put that right here at 106 there and then that other one's going to be right here these are on daily candles on the yearly chart and these are usually how i look for my resistance levels so you get educated on how to find new resistances 
Let's pull this back to the 20 day now. So the resistance we got to break is going to be that 97.11. We couldn't do it. We tried many times Friday in an hour time frame. Just wasn't able to do it. It did break up to 97.90, and that's when I should have probably took my profit, but I held the stock, and it pulled I was up probably about 300 on it by that time, and it pulled on back to 95.60. I'm still very bullish on this, but you just got to be cautious and very patient with it. So the low support. I don't want to see 88.62, but that's going to be a very strong buy. Your second one's going to be right here at 91.50, 91.95. Your first support at 93.62, and the resistance that we got to break is going to be that 97.11, and that'll bring you up above up above 100. And then that next resistance that goes after that 100, I'll pull up this year chart again, magnify this up going to have that 176 then you got the 102.69 and 105.26 and then my target of 106.42 and what a beautiful little trade on them daily daily pattern there I mean it's just beautiful green candles all the way up so just keep in mind the bears are still going to try to bash it but they're thinning out I'll tell you they're thinning out resistance that we got to break is going to be that 97.11 and that's bind the next one we're going to talk about is another troubled stock with some tragedies. And if we're down here at support. We hit it again, and that's going to be Boeing at 330. Yeah, well, you know, Boeing, I got to say, that company needs to be in shape. I mean, you know, sad news uh, earlier today reported <laughs> that Iran has confirmed that they are obviously responsible for the tragedy they misfired. A missile and unfortunately many lives were lost my thoughts and prayers to the Canadians also and to everyone who's connected with that uh, situation but so many Canadians were on that jet apparently about 67 uh, super big tragedy that jet was also going to be on its way to Toronto so the airport was flooded with flowers and candles and uh, very sad very sad um, the only thing that I can say about Boeing, the only thing this can do in their favor, actually, because it's had such bad luck with their 737 jets, and everyone thought, oh, my gosh, another crisis with Boeing. And uh, fortunately for Boeing, uh, this is not a situation where it was a mechanical failure with their aircraft. So, um, you know, the stock has, you know, fell below the 20 day moving average uh, yesterday, but there has been some squeeze on the Bollinger Bands and it's kind of looking that, you know, the stock's a bit on an uptrend. Um, I also did notice that there was some money flow on the option side as well coming into Boeing towards the end of the day. So, you know, very well could be that uh, the thought process on that one. Uh, and how I took it was that, that, you know, maybe they're buying the option calls last minute in anticipation that the news for this investigation, which they knew was coming out this coming weekend, would actually be in Boeing's favor. And so if that's the case, we do have Boeing calls in play currently. We bought these option contracts about five minutes before the close. We purchased the 340 calls for Gen 17 at 185 and uh, those were actually $420 earlier in the day. And then Boeing had a big pullback. So we took advantage of that towards the end of the day and bought the same contracts that were around 420 picked them up for better than half price. And we'll see if there's going to be some sort of positive market reaction on Monday as a result of this situation not really being um, a liability on Boeing's hands. Um, the other thing I do want to mention with regards to Boeing, um, you know, can anyone really turn the company around? I mean, listen, I want to mention and remind everyone that, you know, Dave uh, Calhoun has the toughest job. He has to fix Boeing. He will be stepping back as the CEO on Monday, and he is going to be tasked with winning approval for the 737 MAX to fly again. This is going to be the first step in ending a 10-month crisis as you can appreciate, it has cost the company billions of dollars. And you know what? Don't care because they have cash. And you know what? These crashes have killed 346 people. It's actually made a lot of people very uncomfortable flying on Boeing. Um, so in order for him to succeed, you know, you have to remember his background 
uh, Dave Calhoun's background. He was a veteran of General Electric. He's also from the private equity firm Blackstone and also media measurement firm Nielsen. And he has to win back the trust of a number of groups. So what that's what Boeing needs right now. They need an inspirational leader, which was a comment made by Ron Epstein, who's an aerospace analyst with the Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. And he said, you have to have a workforce that's, you know, you have a workforce actually that's demoralized by what's happened. You have to make the airline customers actually comfortable, but you also have to make the regulars comfortable because you know the FAA is right in here. And you have to also be a good operator because your largest production line is shutting down. So can Dave Calhoun turn this around for Boeing? You know what? Hats off to this man. He's got a tough job. He steps in those shoes back on Monday and really look forward to seeing what he is going to do and fix this mess. So Jim, what's happening with this chart and what do you see lying ahead? Well, I see it. I see we're starting to squeeze, and with this news here, this kind of tragedy that just came out here lately, um, I think this could be a little catalyst just to kind of have a short little fly by night, I would say, no pun intended, bounce. And we're going to look at the did have a yearly high of 446, and I was really excited even up here when it and then that tragedy happened, and she's had her up and down rides, and it seems like. They recovered some more memos again, bad mouthing, bad mouthing the inspectors, so the regulators. So we're going to see what happens with that. But uh, like Miss Vegas says, you know, this CEO is going to have to try to turn this company around, and it, I think it's all about confidence, rebuilding confidence in the plane. And so we're looking at it at a at a at a little wedge right here. I would say maybe a little flag, and we're going to pull up the 20 day. 20 day kind of tells me where resistance might be and I see the long resistance up here right around the 438 I have a target for right around 435 come come Monday let me put that little target right here so I won't forget about that right there at 438.43 and we have a low support down here right around the 2 328 17 area and we have the first resistance, which is going to be right here at the 331.84. If we can bust past that 331.84, which was the day high on Friday. Not the day high. I mean, it was up here right around the 337. And then it just pulled back most of the day. So once that Iranian news came out on, uh, over the weekend, I think it was later Friday, after Friday evening is when the news busted out. It... it, it it probably was anticipation that maybe it was Boeing's fault for the pullback, but now that that's going to happen, I think we can retrace back up here to the 335, 334.86 area, or 70, yeah, 334.77 up to that 335.86, and that's going to be your hard resistance. If we can bust past that, we'll get back up here to 338.43. But low support at that 328.17. I think we're going to break up and have a little bullish take on it, and it's going to run up here to 335, 333.55, and that's the resistance that it has to break to bring it up to, which I would say, the next level of 335.86, and that's Boeing. And then here's another pot stock that's on a rebound, we think, and that's going to be CGC, although it did close with a descending triangle. DCG. I mean, CGC. CGC. <laughs> we know what you meant. Yeah. Um, so I do want to say canopy growth. I mean, you know, this again, Jake, Trend Spider. I've got to tell you, you guys got to follow Trend Spider. But, you know, Jake comes into our room and he brought CGC to my attention again. And I got to say, I really like it. And, you know, one thing I want to mention, too. OK, so we have the new CEO starting January 14th. You guys remember that Constellation Brands, the ticker STZ, or STZ, however you want to say it, um, they own 37% of the company and remain bullish. You know, Canopy Growth is the top grower in the world. The demand for the stock is still strong, and the stock is bouncing off the 50-day moving average. 
Um, you have to remember this new CEO, David Klein, he is the CFO from Constellation Brands. He's going to take over. And let me tell you, he brings a deep knowledge and understanding of retail and finance. And um, the fact that they own 37% of Canopy is really a game changer for this company because having a Fortune 500 company gives Canopy Growth a global platform to sell the product and also market the brand and the potential of cannabis beverages and other products can open up new and exciting revenue opportunities for both companies. I think the revenue growth is expected increase uh, last reported from around 170 million in 2019 to more than 2.2 billion in three years. So you know what? The timing of a new CEO from inside Constellation may be telling for the future of the company. And you know, we also know that most marijuana stocks have lost 50 to 90 percent of their value since peaking in 2019. But the question remains, who's going to be the winner and when will these stocks start to bottom? So we could see that, you know, we a lot of people have commented that the marijuana stocks are in the bottoming process right now and that the winners of the market are soon going to start emerging. And I think Canopy Growth, like we said, is one of the largest growers of cannabis in the world. They have a market leadership position, year over year sales growth of almost 250%. That is crazy, which was mentioned on the last earnings call. So this stock is poised for growth. And I think definitely Jim's going to talk to us about the, the stock, the chart. But you know what? The stock is in demand. And uh, like we said, it is rallying currently over $20. And definitely looks like what Jake and I were talking about and Jake was commenting on, um, that it wants to break out. I think it's going to want to break out over $22. Uh, I won't be surprised to see this head towards high, high 20s in time, maybe even over the $30 range longer term. You know what, Jim? Let's hear what you think, because there's a lot of catalysts also going forward. You know, you have to remember, it's going to be federal legalization of marijuana in the U.S. Uh, cannabis is becoming mainstream in America and with 11 states legalizing it. 33 states have explicitly legalized medical cannabis, uh, cannabis and the millennials want to keep marijuana in demand because the push for legalization is becoming a reality. And, you know, Canna Constellation Brands has a three, four, uh, 4 billion stake, which is the 37% I was talking about, which is a much higher valuation. And by the way, love the fact that the CEO is very bullish on the company. So I love everything about this. And we have options in play. And so let me tell you the options we have in play for those of you that are interested to check these out on Monday. Let me tell you the ones we have for Canopy Growth, CGC. So once we have for Canopy Growth, we have the February 21st, one, uh, 2250 calls for $110. So we have them that far out because we want to give this time to finally make that move. Can we hit $22 anytime soon? Absolutely. And you know what? The fact that we have them that far out is great. Um, some people have the $21 for the weekly this week, Gen 17, and that's fine too. But I like the ones that are further out um, because the fact that you have lots of time on your side. And I think between now and then the stock's going to have a nice little move. So, Jim, what are your thoughts on canopy growth? Well, we've got a little wedge moving up here. We have a re ascending triangle right now that we're getting ready to break out. This is a yearly chart. i got to draw this. There we go. Put that right there. Take somewhere right about there. So we've got an ascending triangle here on the past month and a half, a couple months. Actually, it hit that low of 1381. That'd have been a real strong buy for sure. But you see the ascending triangle right here, and we're starting to squeeze to get ready to break out that resistance level. Then we got a break. This is on the yearly chart. We did have a $52 high. I like this stock a lot, and it just done nothing but but sold off. And then now we've we're getting ready to break out of an ascending triangle. So I'm thinking break there 
has got to be the resistance we got to break, and that's going to be that 2149. If we can break that or it can pull back, we did kind of break out of, but if you look at this chart, yearly chart, we didn't really break out of that that trend, but Friday we did pull back a little bit out of it. 18, I got 1859 low support on this trade, and I'm just looking at the yearly chart trying to draw me a pivot point. And that's going to be right there at the 2023. So let's pull up the 20 day. And there'll be some more lines I'm definitely going to have to draw in here. But you see where we had this low right down here of 1848. Let's go with this one right here. And I'll just draw this trend line. It started right there. And you can see we did break out of that trend in the close. But it really wasn't much of a breakout of. It did pull back and hit that 34. So this could start to retrace up, or it could pull back to this 200 on the 20-day, one-hour chart. That'll be your low support, and I'm going to put it right at 20 bucks for your second support level. Right exactly at 20. Where was that? Well, a little 20, yeah, 20 bucks right there. And that's about where we closed at. I mean, that's where that 200 is. And we did close up here at 2, 2054. So that, and your third support is going to be right down here, right around the 1957 area, if it decides to pull back. But I think we're in a bullish channel. That little sell-off at the end of the day was kind of sour grapes on a lot of stocks. They did pull back. The, the spike pulled back pretty low. So the resistance that we're going to have to break is going to be this 2094 area. And actually, there's one right here, too, at the 2070. So those are going to be our next resistances. The 2070, the 2094, and then maybe get back up here to this resistance level that we had on Friday at 2110. And then the long resistance is going to be right up here at the 2172 area. And that's where we got to try to break at 2172. So that's going to be CGC. I'm, I'm bullish on it, but I just got to see how it reacts if we have a pullback to that 200. Or if it wants to go ahead and break this resistance of 2110 to the new resistances of 2149 and 2172. And you see on the 20 day we had a 2225 high. So this is CGC and then the last one we're going to talk about is going to be MRVL. Yeah, so do you know what Marvell? You know, Marvell is very involved in 5G. They're also into the digital storage industry. They basically move information at speeds never thought possible. Um, you know, they're very into IP and they have a, they're in the semiconductor space. And they're also, you know, they're into the cloud. They're into automotive, industrial and consumer markets. So definitely keep um, RVL on your watch because you know, they did have their quarterly guidance and they did um, mention that their business sales are up. They anticipate their fourth quarter uh, revenue of 710 million um, and guidance um, up as well by about 3%. So, you know, keep this on a watch, but the reason I bring Marvel to your attention is I took the option contracts uh, Friday and the ones I have here for Marvel are the and i'll tell you why because i was looking at the dark pool prints and i like to follow the dark pool and i had it set up an alert that anything over 2650 would be a bullish sign for marvell so definitely took the stock long at 2650 swing trade into this week and also the 2650 calls that are weekly and paid for those 44 dollars each now one thing too on the Marvell stock, if you actually look at the weekly chart, um, you will see that it actually gave me the sign yesterday that we've crossed above the 20 daily moving average, also crossed above the 50. So I also saw some range contraction on the stock. I mean, the chart looked really beautiful. Uh, so Jim, let's hear about this beautiful chart because it's shaping up. And I took a swing trade here and I want to see if we can get to maybe 27.35. And I'd like to hear what you're going to think and tell me next. So let's hear it for Marvell. Yeah, 2735 was 20-day high. So let's pull up 
Marvell chart and pull up the yearly and look at the yearly first. I always like to look at that yearly daily. This is another one that I've been playing now for three years. I got the 2018 trend lines on here, the 2019, and we're going into the 2020 right now. So we're getting up here to, to a level triple top high. We'll head and shoulders, and that resistance level is right there at 2746. 2736. And then you got another one right in here, right there at that 20, 2695. So I'll erase these after I get done because there's just too many trend lines on here right now. Let's pull up the 20 day again. See if I see anything different. Hmm. I wonder how that grid got on there, but it sure did. I'll have to figure that out. Kind of pretty. Low support is going to be right down here at 2566. Your second one is going to be right here at 2595. And then that first one is going to be right here at the 2639 level. 2639. And you do have a little spot right here where it could pull back to, and that's going to be that 2621. The resistances that we got to break is going to be that 2666, 2695. And I could raise that up maybe just a little bit higher to the next resistance at 2707. And then long 2736 and see what goes on from there. But that is MRVL and that's it for the aftermarket report on Sunday's edition, which is usually longer than the uh, aftermarket reports we do on the weekdays. Always remember, go to our website. You can hit that you can sign up on the website. We have our chat service information right here. Also, we have a little Twitter bird right here. We are now at 949 followers. I think we gained quite a bit last week. We're at 949. I think we were we were going to hit 900. Sorry. Oh, yeah. We got a lot of good followers last week because, you know, even yesterday got a lot of followers because if you guys follow our feed on Twitter and on Stock Twits, um, I gave it a phenomenal call on the Wynn Hotel, and those contracts went super fast from like 33 cents, um, went all the way up over a dollar. So people were making so much money, and I got a lot of thank yous from people on social media. They're not even in the room. They're just thanking me for a great trade. So I'm happy to see that we're helping people. And so I try to post on social media when I can. Sometimes it's hard because, you know, Jim and I are focused and committed to the people in the room. And in between my day, I can try to post on social media as well because I still like to help others that don't have time to, let's say, be in a room. And as well, we have the free trial. So it's not about joining a paid room. It's first of all to experience a room. And then you decide if you think it's worth joining because a lot of work goes into what Jim and I do every single day. And uh, you know what? We love it. And uh, so many people thank us on a regular basis. And we're just happy that we're changing lives. So you know what? You're welcome to come check us out. All the links are in our YouTube channel. So please scroll below in the, and please comment, like, and smash the like button. Um, we're also going to be putting some new features on our website soon. We're going to come up with some newsletters that you can have a watch list for the week so that this way you'll have it there. And I have some picks that we're going to put on that list that are not going to be in the video. So please make sure to subscribe soon. I'll let you know when that feature goes live. And uh, we're going to do some new things for 2020 to help people. So please if you're new to watching our channel, follow and subscribe. Please share the videos with other people that can be helped. And because that's really all it's about. So thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Have a great week coming up. Trade green. And we'll see you back on our YouTube very soon. Jim, anything else to add before we go? Yeah, this is a Sunday's edition. We're off to a good year. Um, 2020 is going to be exciting and maybe volatile. I'm not sure. A lot of the fat cats on Wall Street think we're overextended. I think they don't recognize that the private sector is at work right now and that the economy is building from the bottom up and not from the top down. So this is the Aftermarket Report, Sunday's edition, January the 12th, 
2020 and have a great day and we love stocks